friends forever, that's what we are. Through the thick and the thin, we're friendship stars. We're banger main buddies from the days of old. We laugh, crying, hug, friendship solid gold. My soul could whatever started a year ago. We share our stories and your stories were told. 80s, 90s memories that give us glee. And on the block party shows, and KOTB. Now our friendship circle has grown by far. Hashtag friends forever, that's what we all are. Boom. And if you don't know, now you know. My soul called whatever for life. Hashtag MSCW. Hashtag friends forever. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Hey. Hey, guys. We are ready. Yeah, actually, we have a lot of stories today. And we're very lucky. So we just want to get right into it. Like normally we like to chat back and forth, but right. you got a good like 15, 20 minutes of us going blah, 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 blah. Right. But this time we're going to just jump right into it. So we're going to intro. We are going to intro. Let's do it. This is Brooke. And this is Nikki. And this is my so-called whatever. Hey. Ooh, Guess what time it is. Special Halloween episode. I think we're going to have some music. Yes. Like think, last time. Yeah. I like that. It's gonna, a nice effect. I, I love adding the music. I think I might do it to our story sometimes. Like, when when I see fit. When appropriate. I think it was one time. You we won't say. No, you did. You were like, should I add music? And, and you I were was like, like no. absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, that no, would no. not. That would not fit. No, 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 no. So um, we're here. We, we got, are. We got a lot of stories to read and yeah. to scare you with. Or yeah. freak you out. Right. There are some freaky ones. So we're going to... Freaky, freaky, freaky. We're going to get right into it. You want to read the it. first one? I will read the first one. Awesome. This is Shannon's Ghost Cat. Ooh, I like it already. I grew up in a big mid-1800s era sea captain's house in Maine. Hey. Hey. Neighbor. I used to live in a sea captain's house when I was on Main Street. Oh, right. You yes. did. Yes. They are quite interesting. To help set the scene for you, it has a fireplace in every room, ornate chandeliers, a porthole for a bathroom window, etc. Did not have the porthole for a bathroom window, though. No, you did not. It's old and full of character. And as far as my family is concerned, it is also full of ghosts. Growing up, it was my parents, my older brother, my younger sister, and I in the main part of the house. And my grandparents lived in the in-law apartment in the back. That's nice. That is nice. Most of the stories I can share are hearsay, but there are a few things that I have personally experienced. One of the resident ghosts loves to mess with the thermostat. One day when I was in high school, I came home from school and I was sorting the mail. There's a big counter in the main hallway of the house that is built to conceal radiators. That's smart. That is smart to conceal the radiators. Like remember like the radiators that yeah. I had in my house? Have you not seen those? No, that's so smart. I have seen those, like, when I look at pictures of old houses for sale. And I always think, like, that's wonderful. Like, what a wonderful thing to have. What a wonderful thing. Because it's smart, you know? Because otherwise, they're a big eyesore. They are. And they hurt if you run into them. They do. And they get freaking hot. (laughs) Yes, they do. I spray painted mine on Main Street. And a lot of people do that. Yeah, I spray painted it To, like, make it blend. To match the baby slash our room because we had a like kind of efficiency apartment (laughs) you did it was it was uh, an interesting layout but it worked it did it did uh we didn't say this would be without tangents so here we go um and this is where we generally sorted all the mail in the piles for various occupants of the house it was the end of the school year and it was a beautiful day as i was standing at the counter sorting the mail i suddenly realized that i was getting really hot I then noticed that the marble top on the counter was actually quite warm to the touch and realized that the radiators were pumping out heat like nobody's business, which that's crazy because it's summer. If she's just if it's towards the end of the school year. Right. I went over to check the thermostat and discovered that the heat had been turned up all the way as far as it would go. Yikes. That is crazy. That is hot. That is hot. That is hot. Nobody had been home all day and my parents would never, ever turn the heat up that high. It's expensive to heat the behemoth of a house. Hey, I said it right. That's what I was thinking that you said it right. Also, (laughs) that, no, parents, my parents, my parents would would never, would never, would never. They wouldn't because (laughs) that would be expensive. Yeah. Like, first of all, you don't even need the heat on. If it's the end of the school year, it's like end of May, beginning of June, because this is back in the old days. When they didn't go to school until July. That's true. That's true. And but it was still too warm. Like no, no. But do you remember going to my parents' house? They'd have that freaking house 
set at like 40 degrees. It would be like an ice box. You guys, my parents, now you go there, you sweat your ass off. They have the heat turned up. My mom. Because they're older. They're thin. They're, the, they're, their skin is thin. In the end of July, puts on Dickies. Do you guys know oh what Dickies gosh. are? Cuddle duds. <laughs> I meant to say. Not Dickies. Cuddle duds. Do you guys know what cuddle duds are? I think everybody knows what a Dickie is. <laughs> but I'm not talking. A Dickie that you wear. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait. What other, what other kind of Dickie is there? That <laughs> you don't wear? Well. Well, anyway. Could be could be a guy named Dicky. Could be <laughs> something else. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> catch you catch my drift. <laughs> um. So anyway, yeah. My mother used to keep a wicker vase with peacock feathers next to the toilet in our downstairs bathroom. That's very fancy. Nice. One day, I went in and discovered one of the feathers casually leaned against the wall on the opposite side of the toilet from the rest. <laughs> Brooke, stop it! <laughs> Brooke is casually leaning. <laughs> Brooke. Oh, she pictured this feather casually leaned. Brooke, Brooke just casually leaned. You totally missed it. It was great. It was awesome. I wish this was on video. Um, so one day I went in and discovered one of the feathers casually leaned against the wall on the opposite side of the toilet from the rest. I asked everyone in my family, and they all denied having moved the feather. It was the ghost, I'm saying. One of the ghosts that resides in the house happens to be a cat. Many times over the years, different people have had experiences with the cat. Sometimes people have felt it climb up on the bed and settle in. That's crazy. I'd be like, gee, no. No. I know because what like, if, imagine if you were half asleep. You'd think it was a rat. I, or raccoon. A raccoon. Jesus, raccoon. Or something, you know, something that's not supposed to be there. No, no. Not that a ghost cat is no. supposed to be there, but. Others have nearly fallen trying to avoid stepping on the cat only to realize there isn't a cat to step on. That's crazy. One day I was standing in our downstairs bathroom brushing my hair. The door to the bathroom was open and I had a view of a small hallway that runs from our back door to our kitchen. As I was brushing my hair, I saw a cat in the hallway and for a second thought that the cat that lived with my grandparents had gotten out of their part of the house and into ours. But when I turned around to check, there was no cat there at all. Oh. Spooky. That is spooky. That is. I lived in Illinois for 15 years, and in 2011, I moved back to Maine. Woo, Maine! With my husband and daughter. She was six at the time. We lived with my parents for a short time until we were able to find a house to rent. The first night we were we were all there together, I went upstairs to read a story to my daughter before bedtime. We were lying in the bed reading when she stopped me mid sentence and said, "Mama, I feel like we're not alone." I asked her what she meant, and she said that she felt. Like someone was there with us. It completely creeped me out because I had very intentionally made sure that she hadn't heard any of the ghost stories about the house. I had to stay calm, though, and brush it off like there was no cause for concern. And she still remembers it. That's crazy. That is crazy. The most recent incident that I experienced was exactly six years ago today. Whoa. So now seven years ago. Right. Because this is from last year. This is crazy. (laughs) Yeah. By the way, this is from last year. The most recent incident that I experienced was exactly six years ago today. My sister and I were hanging out at the house with our daughters. My sister has four and I have one and our parents. Quick backstory. My aunt passed away in a car accident in 1996 and her birthday was October 13th. So this was the day after what would have been her birthday. Okay, so back to us hanging out. My youngest niece was about six months old at the time and she had a pacifier. She was very particular about what type of pacifier she would use. So my sister only had a few. She had noticed that the one the baby was using was getting really gross and decided that it needed to be thrown away. She knew she had a spare in her backpack, so she began to look for it. She pulled every single thing out of that bag one by one and the pacifier was nowhere to be found. She was really annoyed because she was positive that there had been one in there. We kept talking about it and trying to figure out where it could be and what we were going to do if she couldn't find it. A few minutes later, she went to to do something with my niece and the missing pacifier was on the floor right next to her. She's a good writer. My sister was... She's a really good writer. Right. Incredulous? Yes. Okay. She uses big words. I like it. Me too. I I feel like I'm right there. I love this. Yes. She swore up and down that it had appeared out of nowhere. I thought maybe it had just gotten flung from something as she was going through the bag, but she was adamant that it definitely had not. We moved on, and a while later, she took the baby into the kitchen to give her dinner. I went with her, and we sat there chatting while my mom cooked dinner for the rest of us, and she fed the baby. 
I was almost positive that when she had put my niece in the high chair, she had placed the pacifier on the corner of the table. But when she was finished feeding her, she went to get the pacifier to give to her, and it was gone again. We all looked all over the place and couldn't find it anywhere. I had brought a laundry basket to collect a bunch of my clothing that I'd left in one of the closets when we moved out. I went and got the clothes and brought them back down to the hall again. At this point, my sister was trying to get her girls rounded up and ready to go home, and she was sitting on the floor trying to get them into their coats and hats. I went to pick up my own coat, and when I did, my sister gasped. Suddenly, out of the blue, the pacifier had appeared on the floor. (laughs) Okay, so that's freaking me out. That's crazy. Suddenly, out of the blue, the pacifier had appeared on the floor. I meant it when I said that it appeared. I had literally just been looking at that exact spot and there had been nothing there but carpet. At this point, my sister and I started joking around that it was our aunt messing with us. We talked about how it had just been her birthday the day before and how it would have been so typical of her to do something like this. We went into the kitchen and started telling my I have goosebumps. Like, seriously have goosebumps. I don't know why, but I just, like, on my back all of a sudden, like, the hair is, like, stood on the the back of my neck. Uh, do-do-do. We went into the kitchen and started telling my mom about it, and she agreed that it was likely Denise playing games. She wasn't quite, quite finished, though. Mary put the baby in her seat and gave her the pacifier, and then she set her down to help her eldest finish getting ready. She turned to come back and get the baby and stopped dead in her tracks. At that same moment, I looked down and the pacifier was sitting on the floor, 10 feet away from the baby in her car seat. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's crazy. So there you go. Those are my ghost stories. I hope you enjoyed them. Did we enjoy them? Yes, we absolutely did. And I love these pictures of the house. The house is beautiful. I mean, it looks like it would be haunted. Yes. Like, it, does. it looks like it has a, a history. Just feel like I've seen it. Like, I feel like when I was, like, reading the story, like, yeah. I pictured the house. But you can tell that's a beautiful house. Like, oh, yeah. That was, like... That was a mansion. Yes. Yes. I love it. And it looks... Like, it looks... I very like how New they, England. I like how they've left it so New England. Yes. Like, me too. I... It's not often that you go into a house... And, like, it's very well done. Yeah. Like, it's not often you go into a house now that they've left it similar to how it was. With, with some of the original woodworking exactly. and things like that. Because it's, it's really so cool. It's so nice. Like, it's just so nice. It's like a snapshot in time. It really is. And I am here for it. Talk about a snapshot in time. This is off topic, but on topic. Okay. But that house that we went into that had the estate sale. Oh, Yeah. That was a snapshot in time. That was like literally walking into 1965. Wait, which house? Was I there? Yes. Oh, the one on Ohio? Yes. Yes. It was amazing. That house. Yes. Oh my gosh. It was like walking in. It was like, but everything was pristine. Just like this house. Pristine. Yeah. And it was like, oh my gosh, I'm in 1965. Yeah, it was crazy. And everything wasn't really really beautiful condition yes like it had like never been lived in but it was just it was old people yeah. and they lived there for a long time and they just took care of their stuff beautiful. because they understood the value in taking care of your things yeah yeah and also they lasted because things don't last like they used to no they don't so they do not but i'm very lucky that i came out of that with a very awesome canister set that I can't wait to show off in my new house. And bread box. And bread box. That was a nice bread box. Yes, it was. I actually gave that to my sister. Oh, the bread did. box. Yeah. She, cause she, she wanted the bread box, but I got another one. Oh, and good. It's just like it. It's oh, Kevin's good. grandmother's. I just have to like scrape the stickers off of it. Yeah. She put stickers on it. I Aww. was like, hey. Well, a little so. bit of goo gone. Yeah. Hey, that's a good idea. I'll take care of it. All right. I'll do that. So I'm going to read the next story. Okay. This is Joy's encounter with Mary. All right. Hi, Brooke and Nikki. Hey. Well, you wanted scary stories, and I don't really have much because I try to stay away from these sorts of things. She really does. (laughs) I suffer with vivid dreams and nightmares. Oh. So I try not to dwell on or listen to scary stories. Mine was not much an encounter, maybe because I didn't want it to be, or maybe it was not an encounter at all, but it has stuck with me, and you were saying you were short of scary stories. It's not much... But this is all I got. And this is a good one. We'll take it. Yeah. 
I worked in prisons as a mental health social worker for 13 years. That's well, scary. That's there a, you go. That, that, right there. D- scary yep. story. The end is what we could say, and it would be <laughs> frightening. <laughs> wow. When I first started, one of the prisons I was assigned to be at was a former state hospital for the criminally insane. Hey, th- okay. The end. The it end. was <laughs> built between 1908 and 1915 and was the largest poured concrete structure until the Pentagon was built. That's crazy. From 1915 to 1953, it was for people that had committed crimes and were declared to be legally insane. In 1953, they opened it up. They opened it up regular mental health patients as well. Opened it up to regular health, regular mental health patients as well. Non-criminal. In 1974, a class action lawsuit was filed by the patients due to severe abuse and cruelty to patients. And let me just say, why would they open it up to both the non-criminally insane and the criminally insane? They must have had, like, sections. I would hope so. Like, locked down. I don't think so in 1953. I mean... Knowing what we know now. Knowing what we know now and how they treated those people. They won the lawsuit and conditions improved. This hospital was later used to shoot scenes for the film Attica that came out in 1980. Oh. In 1982, the hospital closed and it became a regular prison. The hospital graveyard has over 500 bodies in it. Wow. And those are just the patients that died while there that no one came to claim their bodies. So sad. That is sad. Others died in there, but their bodies were claimed by family members. I began working there in the winter of 2002. The prison closed in 2004 and is now an abandoned building but is still on the same property as two other prisons and the outside perimeter is still patrolled by officers. So no one really goes back there anymore. So there's this big empty building, like part of the prisons, a big empty poured concrete building. I wonder if they're like, if you act up, I'll send you out there. Maybe. I bet you. I'd like, you know who I'd like to see you out there? Ghost hunters? Grant. Grant Wilson. How are you you doing? How How are you doing? How are you doing, sir? Um, also, can we talk about, um, why can't I think of his name? Not Jason, but there's Grant and then there's Steve. Oh, yes. Tango. Steve Gonzalez and Tango. Tango. How Where's doing? Tango? So Woo-hoo. did you know that Jason, Steve and Tango have a show now? It's they on. do? Yes. And Grant brought back Ghost Hunters. Yes. I, I did see that Grant brought back Ghost Hunters. What's the other show? It's like Ghost Hunters. Oh, but it's, it's not called Ghost Hunters. Split. It's it's kind of sad. It makes Wait, me so sad. why? What's the what's the drama there? I don't know. I tried to find it. I tried to where, try to, where's to hunt the it down. What's the tea? I couldn't find it because I joined both Facebook groups to see if somebody would spill it, but nobody did. You know who knows? Grant and Grant and Jason. Reddit. I'm going on there tonight. I will find it out. Reddit knows. Send it to me. You guys like Ghost Hunters? Let us know. I do. The ghosts and stray animals are the only ones inside there now. Oh, that's stray freaky. animals. Mm. Excellent. <laughs> just, just great. My husband had begun working there in early 2000, and he had told me stories, and frankly, I was afraid to work there, not based on being around inmates, but being around the ghosts that haunted the building. <sighs> I heard multiple stories of a spirit named Mary. Oh, I, I know a Mary. Oh, Br- yeah, Brooke. I know a spirit named Mary. Yeah, Mary. Where is Mary now? I don't know. What if Mary... She manif- was a bitch. What if Mary manifested to what's her name? To what's her name? The one that was writing things on the wall. Oh. What if Mary is her? No, Mary was, a, Ma- Mary was a rude person. But what if Mary grew up? No. It, no, okay. it's not Mary. Okay. It's absolutely not Mary. Mary was a rude girl. Don't don't say too much about her you don't want her coming back here i heard multiple stories of a spirit oh a spirit named mary that roamed the halls how she could be heard moaning at times and crying help me help me oh my god no how guards and inmates would would report hearing doors and windows open and slam shut when no one was around (sighs) thank god i never had those encounters the only encounter i ever did have was while working in my office there one day i was sitting at my computer desk working Our offices didn't used to be offices. They were former cells that were converted into offices, but they looked like cells for all intents and purposes. That that would be weird. My office was going to my job, right in the prison cell. In the prison cell, it's my office, but it's a cell. My office was typically warm due to a large window that the morning sun would shine directly into. I often would run the air conditioner in the winter because it would get stuffy and warm in that office. 
I didn't have the AC on this day as it was just a comfortable temperature in the office and then I noticed that I started to get cold. This was very rare in my office. My fingers got really cold as I typed, but again, it was wintertime, so I just chalked it up to that. Mm. Then the hair on the back of my neck literally stood up. I got big time chills. Then my neck, and only my neck, got warm as if someone was standing behind me blocking the cold air I felt. I swung around quickly. I was in a prison after all. But no one was there. It totally freaked me out. I left my office and went down the hallway. I was in the mental health hallway, to where the nurse's office was. The nurses had been around for several years. I began telling them what I just experienced, and both of them said, That sounds like Mary. Oh, no. I didn't want to know. I called my husband, who also worked there, to come and get my laptop and other things out of the office for me. I was not going back in there. (laughs) He did and took everything down to the day room for me. Luckily, I traveled to prisons, and I didn't have to be at that prison except once a week. I had my firstborn son in the beginning of 2003 and was off until April 2003. The announced closure of the prison happened when my son was 18 days old, but it took until 2004 to officially close it. It took a while to transfer all the inmates and the officers union was fighting the closing. I probably stopped going there in summer of 2003 as there wasn't a need for me to be there since the inmate population had begun to decrease. But I never went back to that office. I stayed in the day room each time I went there. I never had any other occurrences. That was enough for me, lol. I never thought that this was that big of a deal, but if you were itching for stories, it's the scariest one I have. It's scary. I try to explain it away as just coincidence or maybe an overactive imagination because, again, I am a big time sissy about this kind of stuff. Me too, Joy. But when I tell anyone that worked at that facility and had stories of their own, they are convinced it was Mary that visited me that day in the office. R.I.P. Mary. Please, R.I.P. Aww. Joy. Joy. You're such a good storyteller, too. And look at this place. You guys. It's crazy. You can go on our website and look at the picture of this place. That's it's like insanity. It looks like Fort Knox. It really does. Like that's a prison. Would they have football games in the middle there? I know. Like what the hell? Do they joust? I don't know. Is it fencing? But it's like just a big yard. Yeah. Well, it's like a big prison yard. That's crazy. Ooh, excuse me. So thank you so much, Joy. We appreciate you sending that in. Yeah, I'd like to know where the um, graveyard is. Is it in the prison yard? Yeah. I wonder if it is. Because it doesn't seem like it's anywhere else. It doesn't seem like there's any other space that's big enough to put 500 bodies. Yeah. Ugh. Unless, well, no. Unless they put them, like, right next to each other, which is usually what right. they do. Right. That's sad and It scary. really is. It really is. Thank you, Joy. Thanks. Okay, so now we have Katie's story. Hi, girls. Hope you're having a fabulous day. Nikki, I'm the Katie that won the Joy, the Joy Waitress poster from you and Maria and Trivia. Yay! Yay! That's so cool. So, my story. I don't know if it's scary. It may be to some, but to me, it was comforting. In November of 2008, my mom died from stage four breast cancer. I was 28, had been married five years, and had a six-month-old son. Um, Needless to say, being the youngest of four, I was a little lost without my mom. We are Irish Catholic, so to say we are superstitious and that we believe in spirits and ghosts is an understatement. Hey, I'm right there with you. I have a china cabinet in my dining room that has a music box that my mom and dad gave to me when I was about eight years old. It just quit playing one day when I was around 25, but I've always displayed it because I love it. The song it played was Somewhere My Love. My mom always sang that song to me for as long as I can remember. I should get Bryn something that plays. I just called to say I love you. Oh, I think I'm going to do that. Thank you for the idea, Katie. In 2010, my son Luke was about two and a half years old. He was napping. I was in the family room and I heard a sound. It sounded like a music box. I called out for my son thinking he maybe was playing with his jack in the box. I went to the dining room and no one was there. I checked my son's room and he was fast asleep. I started to walk down the hall and I heard the song, Somewhere My Love, playing. I immediately thought I was imagining it. I walked back to the dining room and as clear as can be, My music box was playing the song my mom had always sang to me as a little girl. I said, Mom, is that you? I said, I know it has to be you, Mom. 
I need you all the time, and I definitely needed the sign from you. The box stopped playing while I was speaking. <gasps> okay. Oh, bro. I don't cry. No, Brooke is crying. But that that's was really. I know, Brooke. I know. Oh, Katie, you got us. You got us. Then I said, Mom, am I doing okay? Am I a good mom? I don't know how to do this without you. I then felt a small, cold draft and the music box played again. That right there told me it was my mom. <sighs> Katie. Katie. Okay. I love you. I, like, I think officially you are the first person that has ever made me cry on this podcast. <laughs> You've cried before. I don't remember. But not like this. Like, this... Oh, how comforting. Like, that's I know. Comforting. But just to think, not only did the music box start playing, but then when she asked her mom. It played again. It played again to let her know that and it she was felt her mom. It. Ugh. This is so comforting to me because, like, I think about it all the time. Like, I think about this all the time. A lot. I've ever since Nan died last year, I've been thinking about death, like, constantly. Well, actually, Nan died this year. Right. But I don't know why, but I've just been like overcome with thinking about it so this is comforting i needed that so badly from her i love her so and miss her every day so again for some it may be scary but for me it was a comfort and a pat on the back for my mom thanks for reading my story i love you nikki and brooke we love you katie you girls have made me happy on days when i was struggling i can't wait to meet you both someday and give you the biggest hug you girls have connected me with people i consider friends and i've never ever met them love katie oh katie Katie, thank you you, thank you for sharing this you're such a good storyteller too everybody's such a good storyteller i know and that i do too uh that is not a scary story that is a comforting story but i'm so glad you shared it because that was special to me yes so thank you that was beautiful katie thank you you are the bomb.com yes thank Thank you. you Now, I have Sarah's scary stories from NOLA. And if you guys haven't heard our scary story from NOLA, you need to go back and listen. And listen to it. Yeah. From- we'll link to those podcast episodes. The scary. It was. We shared it on like one of the scary st- stories to tell in the dark, right? I don't remember. It was so long ago. Here's the Cliff Notes version. We went to Myrtle's Plantation. Yes. We went and took a tour. Yes. Brooke and I were standing there and all of a sudden, uh, like... What do you call it? Sofa or couch thing. Yeah. Lifted up off the ground and slammed down to the ground. Levitated for a second. Right in front of us. Yep. And we were the only ones to see it because everybody else had their backs turned. Right. But we definitely saw it. And And everybody definitely was like, oh. And I thought the guy that was standing next to it, I was pissed off at him because he was getting too close to the furniture. Right. I thought he bumped into it, but he was like not even close to it. Right. Crazy. So... That was our story. And that was in New Orleans. Well, right outside of New Orleans. Merle's right. Plantation. Look it up. There's an Unsolved Mysteries episode. So this is Sarah's stories. Yes. After the 2017 NKOTB cruise, my sister and I went on a ghost tour of the Garden District of New Orleans in Lafayette Cemetery Number 1. What a way to end the cruise. Like, instead of doing it before, like, doing it after. For real. Yeah. That, that's, that's, a, that's a good way to go, Sarah. Good idea. That's my type. That's my type. Yes. <laughs> okay. Next cruise. Nola. You gotta get through this one first. Yeah, well, this one, I'm telling you, it's gonna be New Orleans next time. I don't think it'll be for a while. Well, I'm saying it's gonna be. So, let's continue on. Okay, sorry. There was nothing scary about the Garden District at all. It was just a walking tour of a neighborhood of beautiful houses. Did we do that? True. We didn't do a walking tour, but we did the um, hop on, hop off tour and it went through oh, it. Oh, that's where we got really sunburned. That's where we saw the real world house. Hey, yes, that's right. That was in the garden district. That was a fantastic hop off, hop on tour. That was great, except for when my arms blistered. Oh, yeah, that wasn't good. And we should have bought stock and whatever you call it. To put sunscreen? On. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, sunscreen. Yes. But also aloe Shaded vera. hats. Oh, yes. Because <laughs> remember how much we were like, oh, my God, thank God we have this. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Yeah. I did learn something, though. We got to see the home of Jefferson Davis, who was the first and only president of the Confederate States of America. I had no idea there was a president of those states. Next, we went to Lafayette Cemetery Number 1. Our tour guides told us that the saying, I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole, comes from the vaults in the cemetery. In the cemeteries, You do not typically own the vault that you were buried in there when you die. 
A lot of times, it's a family vault, or if you are part of a fire or police department, you are buried in their vault. Oh, interesting. We didn't learn that about the fire and police department. No, we didn't. But we did take a tour of the cemetery. Yes. One and two. Yes. Some people who typically have less money only rent their vault for a year and a day. Really? It's that length of time to accommodate the traditional year of mourning for the deceased. Wait, what? Yeah, they talked about this. They rent it? Yeah. And then what happens to it afterwards? What happens to the body after? Well, I think that it, she goes on to oh, say. So, oh, so, so, sorry, Sarah. <laughs> um, what hap- Okay. What happens is that after the bodies are placed in the vaults on a shelf, and they basically become slowly cremated. Then, after a year and a day, they open the vault and push your ashes to the back with a 10-foot pole. That's where the saying comes from. Okay. So, they still stay there. So there is speak. a hole in the shelf at the back of most of the vaults, and the ashes fall to the ground. Completing the circle of life. Completing the circle of life, yes. Sarah, you answered all my questions. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just should have listened to your story. While we were touring the cemetery, we came across an altar or something that was left behind after a seance. What the hell? It was very off-putting to see. What the hell are they doing seances in the friggin' cemetery? I don't know, but didn't we see that too? We saw stuff like that. Yeah, but I didn't realize they were doing seances. I just thought it was like morning. We also walked around some and like didn't listen. That's true. On some of them, because it was just so cool. I mean, there was a lot to take in, you guys. Like, a lot to take in. There was. I want to go back. Yeah, me too. After our tour, we ended up back down by Bourbon Street. We went to Café du Monde, Mm. yum, which is the best place in New Orleans, in my opinion. They have the most amazing beignets. And pretty good coffee, too. If I do say so myself. Yes. Cash only. Yes, cash only, just so you know. At least that's how it was, like, four years ago. Yeah, yeah. My sister wanted to go to Marie Laveau's House of Voodoo. She wandered around downtown until we found it. I was expecting a cutesy little gift shop with $10 fake voodoo dolls. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not so much. This place is real and legit. Yeah. They take it very seriously. When I walked into the small space, I felt this weird energy. I'm not spiritualistic, but I could feel it. To the left was a real altar with offerings. I assume it was an altar to... I'm going to say this wrong. Baphomet? Because there was a statue of his fa- of him farther back in the store. Baphomet is a symbol for the devil. There was a nice selection of voodoo dolls. However, they were a bit out of my price range. Most over $300. Holy cow. They were next to the p- positions for casting spells. Potions? Potions for casting spells. And the books that tell you how to do that. I spent about a minute in the shop before I was ready to leave. My sister was in heaven and wasn't going to leave until she bought a t-shirt. I waited for her outside. I definitely buy a t-shirt. Wouldn't buy any potions or anything like that because knowing me, I probably mess it up. You would do it wrong. Yep. Yeah, and true. then you would like die or like have, I don't know or like you'd be cross-eyed forever. Yeah. Or like, like that. you would lose a foot. No, I'm just not. That's nope. My phone battery dropped like 10% while we were in the store and was at less than 3% when I took the pictures. It died seconds after that. That's crazy. The store was way creepier than the ghost tour, by far. However, it probably wasn't as scary as we looked after spending four days on the cruise with very little sleep and then wandering around New Orleans for the day. <laughs> oh, oh, that was a great good. story. It's creepy, though. Thank you, Sarah. So creepy. It is. I couldn't do it. I don't think I could go in there. I love it there, though. I can't wait to go back. I know. I want to live we there. We didn't go in there. We didn't Brooke go in that store. I talked but... about legit living there. Yeah, we did. We talked about moving now. Because I, I... just love it so much. I love the people there. The people were... Amazing. The best people I think I've ever met. They were so anywhere. friendly and warm and excited to, like, talk about their city. Exactly. And, like, show you around. And wanted us to, like, learn about their city. And right. it was just... It was beyond and it was beautiful. welcoming. I mean, there are parts that smell better than others. The reason but... why I love it so much is because I love our New England history. Yeah. Like, I love our New England history. And I feel like it was a part in the South, like, that we could actually go that would have history similar to New England history. Right. It's not like, I mean, no offense to anybody that lives in Orlando. No. But it's not like, you know, one of those well, cities. And history. it's not like, yeah, it's not like places I've gone in the South where it's just like they've destroyed all their history and right. put up new shit. Right. Like. No offense to all that, but yeah, we like our New Englandish yeah. lifestyle, oldy, old timey stuff. Yeah, yeah. Except I'm building a brand new house. Well, yeah, but 
That That's just cool. makes good sense. But knock on wood, we didn't find any bodies. That's good. It's good news. <laughs> oh God. Thank you so much, Sarah, for sending Thank in you, that Sarah. story. Thank you. Next up is Amy's scary story. Once my friend Kathy and I were and but oh also I just want to say I've said it to everybody. Um Sarah, you're a great storyteller. Like that was great as well. I felt like I was right there with you. <laughs> I'm gonna say that to everybody because I love I just love the stories, you guys. This is what They're our awesome. podcast is all about. Amy's scary story. Once, my friend Kathy and I were with a group of pals and going to check out a supposedly haunted tower in Newport, Rhode Island. The story behind it is that a boy died there and his ghost frequented that place. One of the pals with us was very superstitious and into paranormal things, and he told us, ghosts will only show themselves to you if they know you believe in them. Well, I have an open mind, so I was fully hoping to see something. So we were walking up the hill towards the tower and I realize Kathy is not right next to us. So I turn around and she has stopped dead in her tracks, face as white as a ghost, pen intended. <laughs> and she can barely breathe. She's just staring at the windows in the tower. And then she starts to scream. Needless to say, we didn't go any farther. We just ran back to the cars with our hearts beating. Before I ran, I tried to see what she saw, but nothing was there to me. So I don't know what she saw. But I fully believe she saw something. That's crazy. She didn't tell you what she saw? Well, she must have seen something in the windows. She probably couldn't even, like, she couldn't even, like... She probably saw that little boy's face looking oh out at her. Oh, my God, could you imagine? What would you do if you looked at this house where they... Supposedly there was, like, this little boy. Honestly, this tower, and there's a little boy. I'd pee myself. And he lo- and you looked, at the, you looked at the window, and out the window was a little boy staring at you. People would be like, what is that liquid sound I hear? <laughs> <laughs> and I would have peed myself. <laughs> What's that trickle? Yep. That's just Nikki peeing her pants because she's <laughs> too scared. Oh my gosh, that was good. Like, I've never peed my pants in fright, but I can imagine that I would. I think that anybody, I think that people, like, that that's a thing. Like, you can. I would, I would assume so. I mean, like, you lose bodily function. That's what I, that's like what I feel like what happened. That's why I don't, I'm just letting everybody know any ghosts or anything here right now. I do not want to see you. I don't want to touch you. I don't want to experience you. Please do not visit me. I'm not all about that right now. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you kindly. Speaking of thank you kindly. Thank you, Amy, Amy. for sending that in. That's awesome. Great storyteller. Great, great. All right, I'm going to read April's spooky stories. All right. I have been intrigued by the paranormal since I was young. We moved into the house my great-grandpa passed away in when I was about eight years old. Every so often, I would see a tall, dark figure in my doorway at night. Too tall to be either my mom or sister. What the hell? I was never afraid of it. I'm pretty sure it was my great-grandfather watching over us. I'm pretty sure it was, too. I'm Okay, that's good. But I, if you looked in your doorway... And you saw a tar- tall, dark figure in your doorway. Wouldn't you be like, shit? Not necessarily. If I a thought dark? that if it was a loved one, like, I-, I think that I would be comforted by it. Because I've had, like, I- but even like the people that I think that have appeared, like that one time I saw the guy, remember? Yes. That scared the shit out of me. But I think that it's different for everyone. I didn't pee myself, though. No, no. But. but- I mean, he was wearing a hat. And but I also make friends on. with ghosts in my dreams. So, Oh, that's true. We ta- mean, Did we tell that story already? We sure did. Brooke has a ghost friend. Well, I did in one dream and I miss her. But you know, okay, well, maybe she'll come back to you. I, I hope that she will. I keep saying that I hope she does. Did you hear what Charlene said in our chat? No. She said that like she can't read in her dreams. Oh, yes. I did see that. I don't know as if I can either. I know I can because I was definitely reading the messages yeah. that she was writing to me. But on like the wall. when she said that to me, I said, "You know what? I don't think I've ever read anything." Like how would you? Like that's the thing that like how would you come to the realization you can't read in your dreams? I don't know. That's that's what I was like. I was like blown away by. Like that. So, Charlene is very like in tune. She is. Do I you like. Know what the, I, mean? I like the little motion you did with your shoulders. A little, said, in tune. She's very like in tune with like herself. Yeah, and like everything like totally her just presence i feel like i'm 
I'm like blessed. <laughs> That's all I can think of, like to know her. Oh, I feel yeah. That about like all, all of our friends. Yeah, but like, it's just I've never met anybody like her ever in my life. She's uniquely Charlene. Why couldn't we have met her earlier? I don't know. <sighs> there's a you know what? There's, there's, a a, there's a reason for everything. Timing is everything. As Joey McIntyre says, right? Does he really say that? Because I've been trying to look it up to see if I could find him to say that, that like everything happens for a reason. Oh, wait, I think it's in that podcast. It is in that podcast. I'm going to go back and look at it. It's called, oh my gosh, there's a podcast that he did, a podcast episode. And it was about like people who were telling their stories about like their crush on like a, like a teen idol. Like a boy band member. Yeah. And it's that's what he said. Like he, what did he say? Well, he was talking about like that he had like a photographic memory. I yeah. do believe. And then he also said like sometimes he remembers people. Oh, okay. And then he said something too about like everything happens for a reason. I believe it was that podcast episode. But I'll have to go back and check. Oh, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. And then I'll report back. Cool, cool. Okay. Sorry, April. <laughs> In high school. I lost my best friend, Brandy, in a car accident. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This is the story of that and my next encounter with the other side. We went to see another friend's headstone that had just been put up. We took two cars to the cemetery. After visiting for a bit, we decided to leave, but were in no hurry to get back to my house. So I told her to follow me and we would take the long way home. We were traveling the gravel back roads when the unthinkable happened. There was a hill with a curve on it. I don't know if she was going a little fast or if she just got into the loose gravel on the side and overcorrected. But she went off a small embankment and flipped her <gasps> car. Oh, my God. My little cousin was riding in the back seat of my car, said to me they just went into the ditch. I stopped and watched in the rear view for a minute and didn't see them. So I turned around and went back. We found the car upside down. My other cousin and Brandy's sister were crawling out of the car. Another friend, Jay, was unconscious in the oh back seat. Oh, my God. Brandy was conscious and told us her feet were tangled in the pedals and she couldn't get out. I jumped in my car and flew the couple miles home to my house and got my family. My aunt rode back with me and the rest followed. When we got back, my other friend Michelle and I were talking to Brandy to get her mom's work number and stuff. Then she said, I have to move my legs. She did move a bit. A couple minutes after that, she went unresponsive. Oh my God. That was the last time I spoke to her. Oh, gosh, that's so sad. Oh, my God. By the time they were able to extricate her, she was gone. Brandy and I were inseparable. We had one class together. I was a senior and she was a junior. Oh, my God. I didn't. For some reason, I thought she was telling another story about somebody else. And like, I didn't realize that was the story of the friend passing. Oh, my God. Honestly, she was the only reason I was passing that class. A couple days after her funeral, I had a test in Algebra 2 as we started to take it. I felt a calming, reassuring hand on my shoulder. I looked back and no one was there. I knew it was Brandy. A few days later, the phone call started. Same time every night, 9.30 p.m. The phone would ring twice, then stop. If we answer it, no one was there. This happened every night for a couple months. After a few times, we all just started saying Brandy's calling. I know she is still watching over, but don't feel like she's still around physically. I have included her photo and a photo of us together. Oh, wow. Wow. My last story is the night we stayed at the Velisca. I hope I'm saying that right. Yep. Velisca Axe Murder House. Jeez, um, you stayed that night? <laughs> you stayed the night there? Here is a little about the crime that happened here. The Velisca Axe Murders occurred between the evening of June 10th, 1912 and the early morning of June 11th, 1912 in the town of Velisca in south- southwestern Iowa. The six members of the Moore family and two house guests were found bludgeoned in the Moore residence. All eight victims, including four children, had severe head wounds from an axe. Oh, my God. A lengthy investigation yielded several suspects, one of whom was tried twice. The first trial ended in a hung jury and the second ended in an acquittal. The crime remains unsolved. That's crazy. Yikes. April 25th, 2018, I went to stay the night at the Axe Murder House with my daughter and a couple friends who do paranormal investigations. Oh, my gosh. That's kind of cool. We talked with Johnny Hauser, who does the tours and is also a paranormal investigator. He is an amazing guy. Then he turned over the keys. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, this is insane. You guys just going to stay the night? Just, just going to spend the night here. Just staying in the Axe Murder House. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> I can't. Oh my god. Oh my god. NBD. NBD. Yeah. We had a few oh, we got settled in and started an investigation. We had a few knock and footsteps. A few knocks and footsteps, but it was pretty uneventful night. Thank I would say thank God. We did have a doll move a little bit on a bed. Fuck dolls. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I'm yes. okay with like knocks and footsteps. Yes. Fuck dolls. Yes. Nothing with a face, thanks. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. I tried to get video, but every time I started recording it, stopped. The only real thing that was kind of creepy for me was at one point we were all in the living room. I had set out some colors in a coloring book. People said they have had good luck using these for trigger items. I asked the kids if they wanted to color or maybe play a game. Ugh. All of a sudden, I got an ice cold feeling on top of my legs, like someone was sitting on my lap. Oh, my God. I told the others, and one of them took a full spectrum picture. There was a huge orb right next to me. Unfortunately, I don't have the picture because the girl who took it isn't with the group anymore, and it was not a good split. Oh, Yikes. crap. I know. I made a little bed on the living room floor and went to sleep about 3.30 a.m. I would love to go back again. Maybe next summer. I have included a few photos I took. Oh, there's her friend. Oh, gosh. This house is creepy. Wow. I don't like it. I don't like, you know, you know how I get. I'm, And I mean, I can say that now that I know the history of the house, but Brooke asks, no, well, not anymore. But remember when we used to look at like photos of like real estate? Yeah. And I'd be like, that house is good to go. That house is not. This house is not good to go. I can say that. But then again, I know the history of it. So any, I think anybody would say that, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So no, I'm not. I, no, I wouldn't be. I promise I'm not full of shit. <laughs> Look at the house over there. It's back up for sale. That's crazy. Told you. Glad that Kevin and his dad didn't buy it. That would be bad news bears. I'm not going to talk about it, though, because nope. Nope, 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 nope. So, April. Great storytelling. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Those are great stories. Yes. So sorry about your friend. Yeah, I'm really sorry about your friend. Like, I was like... Like, I'm looking at her picture, and it's just... She had a beautiful smile. Yes. That's so crazy that, you know, just like that. Yeah. So thank you for sending it in. Yes, thank you. Okay, this is Danielle's Spooky Stories. Here, one of my spooky stories. It happened when I was in my sophomore year of high school. I was doing homework in my room when I heard my mother yell out my name and ask, Did you call me? I told her I didn't, and I brushed off the incident. A couple of days later, there was an issue with my shower, so I had to use my mom's. As I dried off, the doorknob and the door itself shook violently oh my god oh my god i'd freak out i screamed at first i thought it was my mom pulling a prank so i called out to her no answer i asked her about it at dinner that night and her eyes grew big she asked me do you remember when i thought you called me when i nodded yes she continued i'm getting like cold you are yes that's creepy i don't like it must be a draft read it let's do it okay um i'm excited (sighs) when i nodded yes she continued when i was in the bathroom i saw the doorknob slowly turning as if someone were trying to open it asking that question was my way of calming my nerves we didn't know what to do we talked to a friend with some empathic ability and she felt that the activity was connected to a nearby railroad We thought that it would be the end of it, but we were wrong. One night, I dozed off during a late night talk show, and my mom decided not to wake me. She woke up again a few hours later, feeling thirsty. As she walked into the kitchen to get some water, the entrance of which was on the other side of the living room, she told me the next morning that she almost screamed at what she saw. There was a nearly see-through image of what looked like a Native American shaman standing over me. That's crazy. She said it looked like he was doing some kind of ritual, maybe a blessing. Oh, that's good. I feel I feel like it was. 
Like, I feel like it was. <laughs> okay, you keep going, and I'm going to tell you why I'm laughing. And he disappeared soon after she noticed him. We were living in Tennessee at the time, and we knew there were a lot of burial... I'm getting cold again. Jeez, i And we knew there were a lot of burial grounds in the area, both discovered and not. We didn't think they meant to harm us, but we also didn't want to take any chances. We got some holy water from our church, and we said prayers and sprinkled the water at each door and every window of our house. Other than that, the occasional feeling of being watched... Other than the occasional feeling of being watched, we never had a major activity again. Every once in a while, we go back over everything and we wonder how the current occupants of the house are doing. We hope they don't experience what we did, but if they do, we hope they have the right tools to deal with it. What a great story. That really is. That is spooky. That is spooky. I had to laugh, though, when she said shaman. Why? Because remember Sims Online? No, you could be a shaman. You could? Yes. I don't remember that. So I think you had to have eight creative and eight body oh. and you would become a shaman. So when someone died, that bring them back right. to life and you do like a ritualistic dance around. Them. I remember now. <laughs> so that's why I laugh because I haven't really heard that word since then. Wow. I do have to say, she said, here's one of my spooky stories. So are there more? Because... There's we next would be Halloween. done with that. Next Halloween. Yep. Because we're not doing this again till next Halloween. Because right, it is freaking me out. I didn't think I'd get this freaked out. Okay. So, thank you so much. Thank you so great much, Danielle. Great story. Great storytelling. Again. I know. All these stories are great. They really are. We have one more left. One more. Here this, we go. This is Becky's not so scary, but very creepy story. I'm ready. Hi, Nikki and Brooke. Hey, You asked for scary stories, so here is mine. It's not really that scary, but at the time it creeped the hell out of me. I bet it's going to creep the hell out of us. I grew up on 20 acres in the middle of New Mexico. We have a ranch about 75 miles south of Albuquerque, and my family, but but more specifically, my mother, is convinced that our property is haunted. Oh, gosh. Over the years, my mother says that she has had several dreams about a Hispanic woman named Maria whom she believes is buried somewhere on our property. Oh, no. According to my mother, Maria was a younger woman who died and was buried on our property. My mother says that from her dreams, she can't tell how Maria died or when, but it was a long time ago and her ghost still hangs around. No one else in the family has had dreams about Maria, but my mom has had quite a few over the 30 plus years my parents have lived on the property. A few dreams aren't really that scary or creepy. We all have bad dreams, but when you add to it what my brother and I experienced several times growing up, it adds to the creepy factor. Uh Uh-oh. I'm here for this. Uh Uh-oh. When my brother and I were both in high school, we both had big boombox stereos in our rooms. That's because you guys were cool. Yeah. That's that's awesome. That is amazing. That was like baller status. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait for it. Oh, I see it. it. Wait for it. My brother would typically blast artists like Korn and Keith Sweat. Yeah! the keith sweat and that's a that's a crazy diversity of music that really is diversification while i of course was listening to nkotb or other pop music but we always turned our stereos off before we left the house i can recall several times after school my brother and i coming home from the bus stop to find his stereo cranked up to full volume blasting spanish music the hell and not just any spanish music but mariachi music that's friggin' crazy every time we would check my brother's stereo it would be turned to the spanish station and the volume would be all the way up even if he had left the stereo set to the cd setting the radio would be on but it wouldn't be on any of his preset stations and every time we would tell our mom she would say maria likes mariachi music that i i i picture her going Maria likes mariachi music. Right. Right. What can, what can I, mean, I say? What can I do? Nothing we can do about it. Oh my gosh. Now that my brother and I are both grown and have our own families and have moved away, that room is vacant most of the time. My parents use it as a guest room and no one that has stayed in it since my brother left has ever mentioned mariachi music or Maria. But I know my mother still dreams about her from time to time. So that's my story. Happy October. Sincerely, Becky. The Chris Kirkpatrick Becky. And we thank you for that, Becky. Yes, we, we thank do. you for your storytelling ability. Yes, that was awesome. These stories were gold. They were freaking gold. They were orange and black and gold. Yes, they were. Because 
Halloween. Yes. So, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Picks are on our website. Yes. Go and check them out. MySmokeOfWhatever.com. Yeah. And if you were like, oh, I do have a scary story, send it to us and we'll save it for next year. Right. We have a folder. Yes. So, they will be there for next year and we will read it then. Um, we have a text message to share. Oh, hey. So, let's just let's just get to it, shall we? I don't know if we read this one or not, but I'm going to read this one and then we have another one. Okay. So this one says, hey, Brooke and Nikki, I'm a newbie to your podcast and I love it. I've been binging for the last few weeks. Right now I'm on step 116. I've only listened to the block party episodes. I think we have read this. I just wanted to say hi. I have a story to tell, but I need to find the time to type it out. Love ya, Erica. Erica, type it out. Send it in. My so called whatever at gmail.com. We want to hear it. We We want all the stories. Thank you for listening. Seriously, thank you for listening. The next text message is, Hey, ladies, this is Erica B. Just wanted to say hi. After I got all caught up on the block party episodes, hey, it's the same Erica. Hey! (laughs) I've gone back and I'm listening to the other episodes. Now I'm on step 85. I just love this podcast. Keep up the great work and I hope to be lucky enough to meet you someday. We hope that we're lucky lucky enough. enough. To meet you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the text message. If you guys want to send us a text message or a voicemail. Or a voicemail. You can do that by calling us up or texting us up at 857-271-1047. Once again, that's 857-271-1047. Yay! Yay! Send us your story. We would love it. So call whatever at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter, so call whatever. Or Facebook, Instagram, Facebook Instagram, group. Instagram, Pinterest. All the above. Yeah. You were there, you guys. Oh, we have a store too. <laughs> we, we do have a store. about that. We so you can go to our that. website and yep. it's linked right there. It's right there. And uh yeah. So oh, and we also have Patreon. I was just gonna say Patreon. Because we just sent out our our mailers. Right. So if our, you guys want to get on that train. Yeah. We we do like little fun little gifts and we're going to be switching up the, the bracelet stuff a little bit. Yeah. We well, talked about some different ideas, yeah. some different we, things. We have some like special little things. That I think we'll still stay on the bracelet train, but every once in a while we'll pop in another gift that we've because we've been thinking of some like really cool ones. Right. Something different. Switch that it you'll be like, oh, I love this. I will use this. Hopefully. Cool. I mean, hopefully. I would use it. I would use it. I would use it. One hundred percent. Sign me up. Yes. So, so um, be looking for that, or if, you can go to patreon.com yeah, slash my so called whatever. Hey. Or you can go to our um website and I think it's support or donate. I think it's support. Can't remember. Yeah. But it's there. <laughs> yep. It's all it's there. It's been so long since we talked about it. I know. We need some like Patreon content big time. I know. I feel like I want to do like a special like Patreon episode. Like sometime. I've thought that. Like just a special episode that only Patreon peeps get. I've thought that. So maybe we can do we can like get on that train. And it doesn't have to be a long one. It could be just like fifteen minutes to a half an hour and it could be just special special right. ep- special I could episode. Just, I think I've talked about this before. I could just get on my phone yeah. and record my musings. Yes, Brooke. And just post it. Brooke. Because I'm not gonna edit that shit. You, I'm just gonna talk. Will you totally do that? Because I I actually want to listen to your musings. My musings are foolish. I, but I love your musings. But I could, I, you know, like I've I've thought about doing that, but then I was like nobody wants to hear that shit. Um I do. I'm raising my hand. I'm sure there's other people raising their hand. They want And to I'll hear even make musings. my own theme song because I don't have the ability to plug in a theme song on my phone. So I'll make my own theme song and I'll sing it. Okay, sounds good. It'll be like do 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 Brooks musings. Hey. <laughs> so, all right. Anyway, just some thoughts, you guys. Thank but you so happy much. Happy Halloween. Yes. And thank you for all the um, the stuff you've shared. And a couple of you sent us photos. We're going to share those on Instagram. Yeah. And um, yeah. So we appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Hello. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Hey guys, it's Jackie, aka Brown Sugar Honey. Um, I was having a conversation with Maria and thinking about TV shows that I probably wasn't supposed to be watching when I was younger. And the TV show Murder She Wrote came to came to mind with Angela Lansbury. Um, and I was like, wait a minute, when did that show actually come on? And I was shocked 
to see that it had a run from 1984 through 1996. So basically, that show ran through, like, elementary school well into towards the end of high school for me. Um, and I remember loving it and feeling like, you know, I could solve anything. Uh, so, yeah, I wonder what other shows, uh, my so-called whatever people watch that they probably weren't supposed to be watching because it really wasn't for our age bracket. Just a thought. All right. Bye. Hi, Nikki and Brooke. It's Joy. Um, I'm feeling a little emotional because I just finished your block party episode from this week. But um, those stories were just amazing. Maggie and Becky and, oh, I can't remember the last girl's name, but she did this play-by-play with the meet and greet. And it was just amazing. I felt the way she told it, the way all of them told it. I felt like I wasn't right there. And I'm in tears now, but I just so appreciate your podcast. And I'm just, I'm missing our guys, and I'm missing being with our girls. And um, I can't wait till the cruise announcement. It's got to get here sooner or later, right? So just thanks again. Um feeling emotional, but it's a good thing. I miss you guys. Talk to you later. Love you. Bye. Hello, hello, hello. Charlene in Long Beach. I haven't called in a minute, so I thought I'd call you girls, see what's going on. I'm having a nice, warm fall, as to be expected in Southern California. Um, I know everyone's going kind of cruise prep crazy. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to go this round due to crunching the numbers and looking at the finances and doing all the things, uh, unless... I went lotto or my dad wins a lotto or someone wants to um, be my benefactor and pay for my cruise and my flight to to, uh, to the East Coast, which is a bother for all of us West Coast blockheads, along with the price of the cruise, having to go and then also fly to the East Coast really sucks. So it's too bad it's not out of Long Beach, which would be super convenient to me, or even out of San Diego. West Coast thing, we could do Mexico, but no, it looks like East Coast again. Uh, but for everyone who is going to be on the boat, I'm very excited for you guys. I can't watch, I mean, I can't wait to watch all the videos and do all the things and see all the stuff, um, even though I can't be there myself. Aside from that, if the money wasn't a problem, it falls with my ninth wedding anniversary right in the middle. I was actually uh, married on April 24th, and although my husband is very supportive, it seems like an extra dig of, bye, sweetie. I know it's our anniversary, but I'm going to be on a boat with my boyfriend. Uh, I mean, he wouldn't mind, but that's just kind of rude, just a little bit. So, yeah, I, I'm excited to hear what everyone's going to do and when they finally do all of the uh, theme nights and all that fun stuff. Um, but, yeah, I just want to check in, see how you guys are doing, make sure it's not getting too cold over there. And, uh Yeah. I'm liking the uh, old decor podcast, too. I was trying to think of fun stuff, and I'm trying to go through my photos to find any old 80s or 90s Halloween costumes. I think I have some pictures of my high school ones. I'll send it to you guys. So, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye. End of messages. File's done.